Some of us are waiting for Stable Diffusion 3 models for download, while those of us who prefer open source stuff are using other things, such as this incredibly difficult to pronounce Hanyuan Diffusion Transformers model. Look, they even have a comparisons table to objectively show this is 2.3% better overall than Stable Diffusion 3. What do you need VRAM wise to run it? Well, if you've got anywhere between 11 and 32 gig of VRAM, then you're golden. Though that massive VRAM requirement is only really if you want to run dialog gen. Like they say, obviously the best operating system to use is Linux. However, they now provide comfy UI support too, meaning even those clunky old Windows operating systems will just about struggle through now as well. Lots of things are planned for the future too, such as web UI support, training, control net, IP adapter, an Excel version, and more. So hopefully we'll get loads more open source goodies soon. So other than being open source and better than Stable Diffusion 3, what else does it offer? Well, first up, it can handle both English and Chinese. Also, like we saw last time with Almost, you can do multi-turn image generation, turn the cat into a rodent and all that sort of stuff. Is any of that true? How well does it handle prompts and what is the image quality like? Let's jump into Comfy UI right now and see. This workflow is about as simple as it gets. You've got the load there for the model, your standard prompts, a case sampler, and of course the preview image. There is also a diffusers workflow as well, but more on that in a moment. Let's start off with a very simple prompt then and see what comes out. There it is, a rodent, very British. Interesting, I have a hat once again. If you saw my previous video on Almost It Happened There too, no cottage this time, but I do have a nice pumpkin. Tell you what, I'll just quickly add some SDXL generation in there as well, and that way we can do our own massively extra scientific comparison to see if that 2.3% is accurate. Okay, so while we can't use Stable Diffusion 3 without paying, what we can do instead is use SDXL. It scores much lower on their table, though I expect they weren't using one of the more recent models like I'm going to do now. Hopefully we should see at least a 12.618% improvement for a recent SDXL model, and so I've added this little group at the bottom using Wyvern Mix to generate our comparison images. And there you can see the little rodent. So if I scroll out, there you go. So there's the original rodent at the top. I'm using exactly the same prompt. Everything's the same there, apart from I am using Wyvern Mix there, and this one is Hun Yuan. I'm going to be doing my own personal little scorecard along the way with the results at the end. So you might like to do the same at home along the way as well. Okay, so judge as you will for that first prompt of a rodent very British. Moving on then to some prompt understanding. How well do you think it will do with something like this? A blue rat wearing a red hat standing on a yellow box, which is next to a green vase with pink flowers in. Oh, actually not too bad there. Okay, so we've got blue rat, red hat, yellow box, green vase, pink flowers, image quality reasonable, AI artifacts, I guess just a few. He's got an extra tail there, but compared to the SDXL result, and it's easy to see which one more closely matches the prompt. Time then to be really mean and bump the prompt complexity up a bit. This one I snagged from my previous video on almost a blue rodent wearing a purple hat who is sitting on top of a large yellow wooden box on a green table in a living room of an old gothic mansion. In the background is a very dirty mirror and the wallpaper has a red flower pattern on it. Writing on the box says no cats. Okay, that's a very long, very complicated prompt. Let's see how they both handle it. Oh, that's actually quite tough because, well, if you look at the top one, the rodent does look a bit freakish, but that dirty mirror is great. I do like that. He's also got the purple hat. He's on top of the yellow box and it's on the green table. It can't do text and the wallpaper doesn't have the red flowery pattern. SDXL on the other hand, cool rodent, purple hat, yellow, some text there, but that mirror is quite clean and there's no green table. And once again, the wallpaper also doesn't have those red flowers. For me personally, a tough call then, but do note down on your personal scorecard what you reckon in this case. On to a new prompt then, hands. We all love them, but can it generate them? This prompt 
should give us some sort of idea. Oh yes, I think SDXL clearly wins here um, for the image quality anyway. Very, very good skin texture. Uh, I think I need to move on before I start giving myself nightmares. As humans are weird, let's get back to cute animals and explore a variety of art styles. Sometimes you want to create anime or photorealism or perhaps one of my favourites, watercolour. So here I've got a prompt watercolour painting of a lovely British rat wearing a black leather jacket and red Wellington boots. Pretty good result for both there. I know which one I prefer, but you're the expert on your own preferences, so put whatever score you want on your own card. All right, let's move on to the next style. Anime this time then, so let's see which one makes the best ginger hamster. Um, yes, I think one of those isn't really anime style at all, is it? Anyway, whichever one you think is the best for the anime style there, personally, I think it's the top one, although the bottom one does have a certain je ne sais quoi. Realistic photo style time then, this one should be easy for SDXL, shouldn't it? Hmm, interesting result and not really what I wanted there, SDXL. Sure, the photorealistic style is better, but everything else is, well, do update your scorecard appropriately. Now, the astute amongst you should be able to notice one of the problems down there, so let's try this. We'll change African to Chinese, see if that makes any difference. Well, something has changed. Um, but not very much in the SDXL model. Is it the model I'm using? All right, let's have a look. Let's change this to something else and try again. But likely you'll find many of the same faces in there, even if the overall image quality is better with SDXL. Flipping it the other way around then and going for a painting style instead of photo realism, which one do you think will create the painting of a blue vase with red flowers next to a cool rodent wearing a green knitted jumper the best? Well, for style, content and form, I think I know which one is my personal favourite here, but uh, well, do make your own mind up there. Before I move on to the installation guide, there's just one more thing to compare here, and that is the case sampler versus the diffusers nodes. You have the option of using either, so what are the differences? Well, here I've got the two workflows together for you to compare. Their sampler node is much more basic. You can see there, it's just got the pipeline going in and the positive negative prompts. Whereas the typical case sampler, you can pass in the model and a latent image. This means, of course, you can do things like image to image if you use the case sampler, whereas if you use the diffusers version, it's not going to do very much because you can't pass a latent in. Zoom in a little bit there, you can see there are some slight differences with the image, but overall they are pretty much identical. The other slight difference is when you're using those image latents, such as with a high res fix pass. Here, you can actually go fairly low with a denoise. I've gone down to 0.33 there, compared to your typical SDXL model. We can just do a quick zoom in. So there's the standard one. You see the hand is a little bit wonky. Then we go down, we have a look at the high res fix, and it sort of sorted out the hand a little bit there as well. But that's at quite a low denoise. Normally, if you go that low with SDXL, DXL, it will look all squared and blocky and crunchy. Okay, so lastly for this section, we've got the highly science-based result table. You may have your own results if you've been playing along at home, but here are mine. Overall then, I'd say Han Yuan is about 7.5% better than SDXL, especially when it comes to actually doing what you tell it to do. Want to get their set of custom nodes installed for yourself and try at home? Okay, it's install time now. Over on their website, they've got a full set of instructions, including your comfy UI install if you don't have that already. I've got a video guide for that as well, so check the links out in the video description if you do need more information. Okay, so like they show here, all you need to do is basically copy the comfy UI HYDIT directory into your Comfy UI custom nodes directory, install the requirements as usual, and finally download the models. Okay, so the easiest way to get that custom node directory is just to download the full repo using a typical git clone command like we've got on screen there. So git clone, and then you can copy and paste the URL. When you click on the little green code button, that will pop up, and you can click that and that will copy the URL to clipboard. 
After you've run that git clone command, obviously you'll have all the files there, but the only one you need is that comfy UI one, so you can just drag that into your typical custom nodes directory. The easiest way to download the models is just to copy and paste the commands they provide, though as an alternative you can of course use your web browser and download the files manually if that's what you prefer. Do remember to activate your comfy UI environment and run the command from your comfy UI directory. All you need to do then is install the requirements, however you may wish to edit the requirements file first, because as you can see down the bottom there, some of those have some fixed versions. Now it does actually run with the higher versions of Torch, I just removed those and everything installed absolutely fine, but that option is up to you. All you need to do then is restart Comfy UI and load either of their two example workflows and you're good to go. Though you'll likely want to change the model name to disabled. Let's go back over here and zoom in. So this model name starts off with something else and those are actually just your default models in there. Now you can download things like the distilled model, put it in your usual checkpoints directory, select it and then you can use it there. Additionally, if you want the same workflows as I used in this video, they're already available to my amazing Patreons. And for even more rodent geekery, why not check out this next video? Ooh, nerdy rodent. He really makes my day. Showing us AI in a really British way.